Hello and welcome back to Game Domain. Today we're going to be bringing you a bit of a different video than normal, as we will discuss five different misconceptions or myths that people talk about related to the Pokemon franchise. We thought of the idea of this video and thought it'd be a pretty cool one to make, so here it is. The five on this list will not be in any particular order, but I'll share the common theme of being thrown around on playgrounds and on the internet. But in the end, they are really just false statements. With that being said, let's get into the video. Misconception number one. The first misconception that we are going to talk about is the one that is closely correlated to the Pokemon anime. And even diehard fans of the games and the anime get tripped up with this fact. Throughout the first five seasons of the Pokemon anime, Ash's travel partner Misty almost always carries along her egg Pokemon, Tokubi. Tokubi's first appearance in the anime was in episode 46, the attack of the prehistoric Pokemon. Ash is given a Pokemon egg, which is a new feature in the Pokemon franchise as it was not yet seen in the first generation of Pokemon games. It cracks partly and turns into the Pokemon Tokubi, who believes Misty is its mother as she is the first thing that Tokubi lays its eyes on. Togepi then becomes Misty's close companion for many episodes to come, but many people began to assume that Togepi was a Kantonian Pokemon. Togepi was then introduced as a Johto Pokemon for the upcoming games Pokemon Gold and Silver, but many of Pokemon's current generation of fans remember growing up with Togepi in the Generation 1 anime, as Togepi was first revealed over a year before Gold and Silver came out. This misconception is mainly due to childhood nostalgia fogging up the facts, and many fans are shocked when hit with this news. Misconception number two, Lugia is a water type. The second misconception we are going to talk about revolves around the most popular legendary Pokemon of all time, and another misconception that can be correlated with the anime. The Guardian of the Seas is known as the legendary Pokemon Lugia. This should make Lugia a water flying type based on origin appearance, right? No, you are mistaken. This is roughly one of the most infamous type misconceptions in Pokemon, and this still shocks fans up until this day. People also believe this due to the fact that Lugia's legendary counterpart, ho -Oh, is a fire flying type, so them being opposites would make a lot of sense. Lugia is also the main legendary in the movie Pokemon 2000. Lugia is seen in the movie as being the guardian and peacemaker of the sea, and is shown soaring above and below the waters of the Pokemon world. Lugia is also known to be one of the franchise's few telepathic Pokemon, as Lugia can use its psychic powers to communicate with Pokemon and humans alike. This power is known to be used majorly only by psychic Pokemon, so it does kind of fit Lugia's typing narrative. In the games, Lugia is also found in the Whirlpool Islands, which float in water. I mean, come on, could this typing be any more confusing? Although Lugia is a psychic flying type, many still believe that it is a water flying type, and the evidence show that it probably should be. Misconception number three, Brandon's hat is actually his hair in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. The third misconception we will address is based on design more than anything, as it is regarding the appearance of one of the franchise's protagonists. In the Generation 3 games, Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, as well as their Generation 6 remakes, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, you have the option to play as either the female protagonist, May, or the male protagonist, Brendan. Players who chose Brendan were quickly greeted with what appears to be a 12 year old kid with pure white hair. An adult would look at this and question it, but most kids at the time just accepted the fact that Brendan had a cool hair color and just went with it. Players believed that this was Brendan's true hair until more detailed graphics of Brendan were released by Game Freak and the Pokemon company and players realized that there was a brownish strip of hair along Brendan's ears. Childhoods were then ultimately altered, and Ruby and Sapphire's developers and art designers stepped in and confirmed that Brendan was in fact wearing a white hat, and his hair was perfectly normal for his age. 
and Emerald, which was released two years after Ruby and Sapphire, the stripe on Brendan's white hat was changed from a blackish color to a lime green color. Perhaps to pay homage to the millions of fans who got fooled by this art flaw of sorts. Misconception number four, Pokemon is a game for kids. The fourth misconception that we'll be discussing is one that is thought of by some casual fans, some diehard fans, and especially outsiders looking in. Or in other words, Pokemon haters and just non-fans. This misconception that Pokemon is nothing but a game for kids. This could not be any more false. But you do have to step in other shoes to find out why it is said. Pokemon is in a weird spot at the moment and it has been for the last couple of years. Most of the original generation of fans are now in their mid to late 20s, and it's sad but true, many of them have left the franchise. As fans got older, they started to think that they couldn't enjoy the franchise anymore because it was just for kids. Pokemon has welcomed in a whole new generation of fans, and the community is probably bigger now than ever before, but people just look at fans in a bad way. People who hate on the franchise claim that the game's concept and stories are just for kids and you are uncool if you play the games as an adult or even as a teen. These people are really speaking to a brick wall though, because the stories of each game go so much deeper than it seems. Every Pokemon game has adult aspects in it, but we are going to mainly look at the story of Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This is because of the added cutscene between Silver and Giovanni that is not in the original game. Your rival throughout the game, who is commonly known as Silver, goes through an eternal struggle that only older fans can understand. Sure, the main story is made for kids to understand, but not many 10 year olds will understand the disconnect between Silver and his father, Giovanni, the leader of the now disbanded Team Rocket. Silver stole the Pokemon from Elm's research lab because he wanted to get away from his past with his evil father and start somewhere new, setting out on a journey and quest to become champion and make a name for himself. This is something that only older fans can understand, so this smashes any misconception that Pokemon is just for kids. This is a topic that we are thinking about doing a video on, so if you guys would like to see that then please let us know down in the comments below. Misconception number five, Lavender Town Syndrome. Warning, although untrue, this next misconception may be freaky and not appropriate for younger audiences. Please skip ahead to the conclusion if you do not wish to be bothered by this creepy pasta. Thank you. This last misconception is really a myth and the most infamous that the Pokemon series has to offer. This is, of course, none other than the Lavender Town Syndrome. Lavender Town Syndrome is one of the most infamous creepypastas of all time, and almost every Pokemon fan has heard of it. This could also take up a whole video to discuss, but we'll tell you guys a brief synopsis of the myth. Back in 2010, an anonymous internet user posted a pace bent that there was a spike in suicides of children between the age of 7 through 12 back in 1996. Shortly after the release of the original Pokemon Red and Green in Japan, there were reported to be over 200 suicides that were driven out due to the new games. These acts were supposedly driven out once the players reached Lavender Town and the eerie and high-pitched sounds of the theme playing while in the town caused the kids to carry out these acts. There was a certain unusually higher pitched note in the song that could only be heard by the developing eardrums of children, more specifically between the ages of 7 through 12. Game Freak was then forced to change the pitch of the theme for the North American release of Pokemon Red and Blue in 1998. Fans immediately believed this story, and it began to spread around the internet and became more developed and had more elements added into it. Although many fans believe this creepypasta, it has now been debunked by Japanese police authorities as well as Game Freak and the Pokemon Company. Hey, thanks for watching. Please feel free to tell us down in the comments section below what you thought of today's video. Also, tell us if you ever fell for one of these misconceptions or even give us some cool ones that we didn't cover in today's video. While you are down there, 
be sure to leave a like and subscribe and check out some of our other content and even our recent Metroid documentary that we just released not that long ago. We also have a lot of exciting news to tell you guys about. And that is that we have launched a second channel called Film Domain. We're starting off slowly by launching a two videos a week upload schedule. So please make sure you show your support by heading over to Film Domain via the link in the description. There we hope to cover various topics related to film series like the Marvel series, Star Wars, and anything that is popular in Hollywood at the moment. We will be covering topics such as theories, breaking news, and even rumored links about upcoming movies as well. Also, don't forget to follow us on our Instagram at RealGameDomain. There we will be giving channel updates as well as exclusive sneak peeks to future projects, series, and videos. Be sure to check out some of our other recent videos, which we will leave links in the description for as well as adding our Discord. And new info regarding new channel updates. Our Discord is open to you guys to come and chat with our staff members and each other about gaming. So don't be afraid to join. We have great discussions about gaming topics in our Discord, and it is a great way to communicate and even play with fellow gaming fanatics and viewers of our channel. Down in the description, we will also have links to our merchandise stores, as there you can purchase an array of game domain merch ranging from mouse pads to even phone cases. Stay tuned to Game Domain for more great content, and thanks for watching today's video. Attention, all Game Domain fans. We hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you did, remember to subscribe, like this video, and then check out some of our other videos. Please, join our Discord to chat with our staff and our other GD fans. Also, check out our Patreon, our merch store, and other links all down in the description. Thank you.